Welcome back, people, to another episode of um, Let's Play XCOM Enemy Within. Now we're researching the arc thrower there. Uh, let's see, anything else? Well, we do want to build a couple of interceptors. Which we can't do. I can build satellite, but, well, I can't, but, uh, first off, let's get one of those. Let's see, it's the hangar. Here we go. Okay, so our, um, we need a couple in Asia. Let's order, let's order one interceptor in Asia, so that we at least have something to defend that missile with. Uh, it's very nice. If you start in the United States, those airplanes, uh, the interceptors, they're like half price, uh, which is awesome. Great bonus. All right. Assign new research. Cool. We've completed our research into, into the arc thrower prototype. We believe this device is ready for final production in engineering. The mechanism functions on a basic premise of neurological disruption, emitting from a focused electromagnetic pulse capable of confusing and incapacitating targets within a limited range. As this is our first venture into the field of non-lethal weapons based on the alien physiology, it is safe to assume that there may be unexpected results in the field. It is very likely that some aliens will resist the disabling effects of the weapon, in which case, it might be more effective to weaken the enemy first. The arc thrower is uh, also constrained by our current power supply technology, which limits its effectiveness to two shots per deployment. Any captives retrieved from the field will have to be housed in an alien containment facility. I strongly suggest, advice rather, that we um, build that facility before attempting to capture live specimens. Yes, the arc thrower. Non-lethal signed arm, designed to stun hostile, hostile targets. The mechanism seems to be the most effective against weakened enemies. We'll go into the specifics later on. Now we finally get to um, to do some other stuff here, research other shit. I think we'll go with meld recombination because the sooner we can take advantage of that, the better. Let's see here. The invaders appear to have deployed canisters of this strange substance in human populated areas, perhaps as an experiment. It might also be a weapon of some kind. Further, an further analysis could shed light on its potential dangers and applications. Commander, I realize our troops have to put their own survival first, but every alien we use explosives against is one less opportunity to recover new artifacts. Mm, yeah, well. I'll I'll take I'll bear the cost of that. No problem. All right, let's uh, get the alien containment facility up and running. Alien containment facility online. Fuck yeah. Um, do we assign a new construction? Well, let's go and have a look here and anyway. We still got some room to grow up here. Mm. But if we really want to expand our facilities, we're going to have to start excavating beneath the base. Unfortunately, the deeper we go, the more it's going to cost. Yeah. Well, I would probably want to start ex 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 fuck excavating. He says as he ruins his desk. There we go. Take care of that later. Keep bumping into shit. I need to clean it up. Okay. Let's see about 35 I need for the arc thrower. Uh, since we're short on cash. Dr. Vaughan expects our troops to try to bring one of those things back here in one piece. Much less alive. Mm -hmm. Since we need that. Let's go and visit the gray Several market. Members of the council have expressed har, har, an interest har. in acquiring some of the artifacts we've recovered. However, we should be careful in choosing what items we release. The research team may not have discovered their true value yet. Yeah. Except in the fact of uh, damaged stuff. Like this item has no research benefit and can be sold freely. There we go. 30 space bugs. 
Which means we can now get the uh, arc thrower. Let's manufacture that. Submit. Submit. There we go. And we'll um, scan for activity. New interceptors over Asia. So, what is it, Doctor? It's remarkable. The crystalline structure housed within the canister is actually a suspension containing billions of cybernetic nanomachines, each made up of both organic and mechanical components. My team's analysis indicates these microscopic robots are capable of assembling mechanical structures with unprecedented efficiency. With further study and some specialized facilities, we may be able to engineer a sort of cybersuit that interfaces with the human body. My team is more interested in the possibility of physically altering the tissue itself, incorporating aspects of the alien's own genetic adaptations by using the nanites to fuse the foreign material. The commander will have to decide where the greatest advantage lies. Is there anything you agree on? Given the apparent purpose of the nanites, they allow combining organic materials with one another, or with machines. We have at least agreed to call them... Meld. Ba -ba. That's the main... Um, meld is like the main thing with this expansion. Which is awesome. And I can't wait to put it to use. Right. This amazing material's most salient feature it is its versatility. In early testing, we were able to devise several methods that allow for direct manipulation of the meld substance and its physiochemical properties. While searching our records for any reference to a material with similar properties, we... Uh, uh, let's see, I, rather, uncovered a number of redacted data stores created in the 1960s. Womp, womp, womp. I wonder what that could have been. But much of that information appears to have been lost. In any case, the advantages we've made... The advances we've made... <laughs> should allow for a wide range of applications in the field of genetic modification and cybernetic enhancement. Although, we will need to build dedicated facilities to enable these potential research pathways. It is probable that the invaders are more familiar with Mel than we are, and may already be fielding combat elements that take full advantage of its capabilities. So we can build a cybernetic slab, uh, which is um, like the mech uh, pathway, and the genetic slab, which is like the soldier, um, you know, gene manipulation stuff. We also get 40 additional meld, we get um, mech 1 warden, which is our, our basic mech. We also get 3 uh, gene or genetic modifications here, the hyperactive pupils, depth perception, and adaptive bone marrow. Hey. So, yeah, I could have just gone through it here, I suppose. Right, that's the mech facility, the gene lab, adaptive bone marrow. Wound recovery time is reduced by 66%, stacks with rapid recovery, which is another boost you can unlock through the officer training school. Soldier also regenerates 2 HP per turn up to the max without armor. So, that's really good. Uh, depth perception. Height advantage confers an additional plus 5 aim and plus 5 critical chance. This is a good one to have for our uh, snipers. And Hyperactive Pupils confers a plus 10 aim on any shot after a miss, which is awesome for heavy soldiers. And here's our uh, Warden, Mech 1. Uh, for every, like, rank of Mech, you can have, you can choose between two modules. Uh, this thing here has uh, Kinetic Strike, which, um, you know, is like a super punch that can pulverize cover and enemies and also boost mobility so it's like if you've played um if you've played um oh xcom 2 it's sort of like the rangers melee ability uh, and you can also have the flamethrower 
which is great for crowd control against melee enemies. You can just cover a, a, an area in flame and just, um, you know, s sort of shoot across. So, they're both great. I like the punch, though, because it's awesome to punch aliens. <laughs> I love that. Uh, let's see here. I can go with the experimental warfare. The alien materials, the sectoid autopsy. I suppose we'll go with the sectoid autopsy. Rather than the experimental warfare. I think so. Let's see here. Our, our initial scans of the small humanoid aliens recovered so far have revealed something quite remarkable. We've, we're detected... We're, we are detecting components of non-biological matter embedded within their eternal structure. Could these could these be implants of some kind? We've made a number of interesting discoveries based on the autopsy results of the alien specimen you brought back. The research team is now referring to this particular variation as a sectoid, based yeah. on the unusual structure of its internal organs, which we believe to be the product of genetic manipulation. As we've seen in the field, this species also seems to harbor some sort of telepathic ability. Cool. Now, we don't have the, um, the money to start with the meld yet. So, we'll just have to wait around for something to happen. Hopefully we can get some more cash. Okay, sectoid autopsy is complete. That went fast. We get the uplink targeting aim available for manufacture. Um, I'll get into that a bit later. Let's see. We've found no discernible genetic variants between any of the small humanoid aliens that have been examined thus far. They are perfect genetic copies, each and every one of them. The subject's brain is quite sizable with respect to its body and appears to have been augmented even further with cybernetic implants of some kind. Considering the fragile nature of the creature's physical form, it is safe to assume that these implants were intended to somehow improve the combat effectiveness of the species. Dr. Shen and the engineering team have already developed several theories as to how we might be able to adapt these implants for our own use. Additional tactical information may be available in the field when viewing hostile targets in the unit analysis view. Yeah, that's right, you get information on how these uh, species operate um, in the unit analysis thing. I can show it to you uh, later on. Let's see, Dr. Valen's personal note. Cloning, genetic manipulation, biomedical implants, the implication of this technology, and the alien's motives are not reassuring. And we get a new uh, item available. Activate this module during interception to provide an immediate temporary boost to a unit's accuracy. The module will burn out after one use. Its technology is based on sectoid implants and allows us to send a data pulse through our satellite network. That's nice. So, as much as I want to get to the beam weapons, it's very slow to research that. It is worth it. I think. Let's go with the experimental warfare. Yeah, let's go this experimental warfare. This technology has a number of potential applications. I'm sure the science team is eager to begin. I'll notify you as soon as we have something significant to report. Thank you. Let's have a look at that item, by the way. Purchase item. Right. 10 coins, 3 sectoid corpses. Let's, uh, let's get one of these. Not that we can afford much more. But it might be good if we come up, um, against a, uh, bigger UFO. Oh, request from the United States. They want 2 sectoid corpses. We have 15. And, uh, let's see, they want to give us three scientists for it. That's really good. The CEO of a major American pharmaceutical company has expressed interest in studying one of the sectoid corpses we've recovered. They promise that if we help them, they'll reciprocate in kind. 
more so. We'll dispatch the items. The American research firm just sent some preliminary data from the sectoid exchange. What could have taken the researchers years has taken days thanks to us. And they've been very generous in showing their appreciation. I would say so. Now I did have a time limit of 20 days, but I went ahead and got it over with since we could. Let's see here, alien Commander, abductions. We picked up multiple requests for assistance. Oh. Abductions in progress are marked on the hollow globe. Well, we're gonna have to go with Russia, I think. Australia gives us scientists. Canada gives us... 200. Here's the thing. Do they get three panic? Or two panic? If they get two panic, if we don't help them then they won't leave at the end of the month. And it also means that we can prioritize Canada for satellite deployment, which is actually really good because Canada is a high paying country. Australia, same thing really. But we, we're gonna have to go with the engineers, don't we? I mean, more engineers, more satellites, more money. I'm actually a bit torn on this. I mean... Here's the thing, Australia and Russia are both part of Asia in this thing. You don't have Oceania or whatever, right? So, if we don't do Russia, Australia may revolt. Actually, the safest thing would be to go for Australia. I'm gonna regret doing that. But here's the thing. Every other country, you don't help. Or, let, let, let me um, think about how I should explain this. Okay, so... If you don't help a country, that country gets two panic. And every other country within that continent gets one panic. So, if I don't help, uh, or if I don't help uh, Russia... Russia will get two plus one. Because... There's also Sydney, which is part of the, or Australia, which is part of the same continent, which will get two plus one, because Russia is part of the same thing, right? So that means that Russia will be at panic for level four, and Australia will be presumably leaving the coalition already. I think we're gonna have to go with Australia. If I'm mistaken in this, and you guys know better than me, please let me know. Because that will be, um... Useful information going forward. Alright, let's give, uh, Peng... York Thrower... And Johansson... Let's get in a rookie. Because we don't have a heavy yet. Get this guy. Recruit. Hangana. Hangana. Hmm. I won't uh, specialize yet. I think I'll wait with uh, or wait with customizing our our troops until they actually get a nickname, which they will eventually. Sucks that I had to pick scientists again. Australia has sent a number of requests for assistance, so that's our next drop site. All right. Alien activity continues to surge within several major cities. Our response is crucial to minimizing the spread of panic. 
Let's see, neutralize all hostile targets, locate and secure meld content canisters. We can do that. I hope at least. Strike one. This is central. You are free to engage all hostile contacts in the AO. Don't okay. take any chances. There's some meld over there. We can get up on the roof also. That is full cover. Let's uh, move into full cover. This guy here also. Moving to position. Alien object in sight. Mm-hmm. Hungana. E. E. O. Ah. Let's have a look through On here. Okay, good. That should mean that we can get over there Thank without uh, triggering any aliens. Yes. Okay, let's uh, set up our overwatches. Okay, can we hear any of them? Not yet. We can try to get in here. Okay. Got something over here. Okay. We now know where they are. Uh, our sniper has a bead on one of them. Try firing. Missed. I agree. If that meant I can't aim for shit, I agree. That's affirmative. Let's see. Roger that. Take up position here. Petrova. Palo. Pavlova. Okay. Pavlova. Yeah, Russian names are not my uh, strong suit. If you expect me to pronounce them correctly, don't. Oh, shit, fucker. Okay, one of them is uh, moving. Hope oh, fortunately he did miss. Okay. The other meld is over there somewhere. So, if we can get to this guy over there, um, we will be able to kill them both because that guy is linked to this guy. And if we cut uh, the source, so to speak, then they both croak. So let's try a run and gun. Run up over here by the meld. That means we got a flank shot on that guy. We'll uh, recover the meld. And we'll fire on our flanked dude. And miss with a 70%. Thank you very much. Um. Strange that we don't got a flank shot against that guy there. If you move over here, do we have a flank shot now? No, probably not, actually. Let's uh, move you up here. It's half cover, but we will get a flank shot. 65%. Okay, good. We got both of them. Yeah, it was risky business, but um, had to be done. Um, uh, let's see now. I think we'll have our sniper be on Overwatch, and we'll move you up here. Put you on Overwatch as well, just to sort of prevent these assholes from dying if we can. Okay, good. Uh, hmm. The other meld should be somewhere in this direction. 
So I think we'll want to head that away. Let's send our sniper up on the roof. Oh fuck! They're up on the roof. Oh shit. Okay, well we can't have you stay there then. And you can't get the full cover. So you're gonna have to get back down. And it's only half cover, but uh, get there. Now we know where they are. We can try and uh, set up an ambush. If he plops down here, I won't get a reaction shot. If I move over here, I might get a reaction shot. Let's try that. Let's see what they do. They link up. I can tell by the sound. Ah, there he is. And we get four reaction shots. Or three. Well, it that's him. Cool. All right, looks like there's a way up here. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna send this recruit up on the roof, if we can. I can't tell what constitutes a normal action versus a real action or a full action. I suppose this is a normal action. Okay, so we'll send our sniper up. Well, let's just figure out where he is, where he's at. He's over there. That's a little bit unfortunate. Let's see now. I can get a flank on him, but I don't have run and gun. So never mind. Hmm. This guy here needs to reload, so do that now. Uh, I should uh, reload actually, and we'll send you back down. Sniper's just uh, jumping about, spazzing out. We're gonna have to do it this way. And Overwatch. Now let's see what the fucker does. You hear that? I do. He's on the move. Alright, let's see if you can um, spot him. Can spot him. He's over there now. Okay. Excellent. So here's what we do. Sniper, switch to your pistol, try to damage the fucker with two points of damage, if you can. You could, well, you got one point of damage, but that weakened him a little bit, which means that our uh, dude with the um, zapper can get up here. Will do. Visual on the goods. It's got hot in here. Uh oh. Okay, and there's our other meld. Let's see if we can stun this guy. 80% chance to hit. Excellent. Yes! Now we can begin preparing for the interrogation. So, with, uh, with that zapper, it's 70% chance at 3 HP. And then it's 10% more for every, um, for like, every HP missing. So, um... You know, at 90, or at 1 HP, it's 90% chance to succeed. And if it's more than 3, then your chances are zilch. Heading to that location. I believe. Let's see, he's bound to get flanked there. Let's move you over here instead. Good, good, good. I think maybe we take up position 
up here, now that I, th now that I think about it. We also want to get to that meld as soon as we can. Okay, there's one alien. He's on Overwatch. There's the other one. He's also on Overwatch. Alright. That makes approaching this a bit tricky. Tricky dicky. I think I can make it here without them spotting me. Headed there now. Yes, because that thing shielded our um, our approach, so to speak. So, 82% chance to hit. We'll take that. Good. Is down. Is down. Good, good, good. Good, 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 good. 45% chance to hit. This will probably take a um, reaction shot. Uh, nope, we didn't. We did not. Let's blast them. We got them. Chalk up another one. Whew! Excellent. I don't think we even took damage this time. So, constant improvement. It can only go down from here. <laughs> let's let's hope we we stay on top. Mm, fuck yeah! Okay. So let's have a look at the situation board before we save. See what the fallout is. Impressive work, Commander. Our soldiers have to be feeling good after a mission like that. I do, despite our reward of scientists. We've got a, a heavy now. So that's nice. His name is Femi. Femi? Hangana. He doesn't look very femme. Look at him. And there's a man if I ever saw one. And our sniper finally leveled up. Now, she can get snapshot, which allows her uh, to move and fire with her sniper rifle um, on the same turn, but it does mean a minus 10 to aim, which isn't that big a deal for a sniper. Um, but she can also get squad sight, which means that as long as she can draw a line of sight to a target, and as what well, uh, she can fire way out of her range, as long as a, uh, a squad member has vision. So, that will really make her a sniper. So we'll take that. It's a super fucking great ability. Although, it does mean she can't crit, unless using the headshot ability. But still, it's really fucking good. I know it, it got nerfed, easy, but this could really be a turning point in our research. Mm -hmm. Not only can we interrogate the subject, but bringing an alien back alive provides us with a much better understanding of their physiology. <sighs> Impressive work indeed. Preparations in the containment facility are well underway. All right. Uh, let's see. What was I saying? Oh yeah, uh, the squad side did get nerfed in that you used to be able to crit also, which was ridiculously powerful. Uh, but now you can't crit using squad sight. But that's a trade-off I'm willing to accept. Now, because we uh, recovered an alien, uh, we don't get weapon fragments, because the aliens didn't die and so the weapons didn't explode. So we got the weapon instead, which is a plasma pistol, which is awesome. Now, we do have to research it before we can actually use it, which, uh, you know, that's kind of sucky. But, um, still, really nice, I think. Um, progress. Right, panish, panic has increased, increased across North America, panic has increased. Across Europe? Oh, fuck me, Russia is part of Europe? I thought Russia would be Asia, but I suppose not. We will Hold be on. Touch, Commander. Fucking derp. Facilities at maximum capacity. Russia is required. part of Europe. Not Asia. God damn it. So I could have gone to Russia and, and I would have been fine. Or I could have gone to Canada. Motherfucker. 
<laughs> oh, oh, that was painful. That was fucking painful. Okay, we're researching experimental warfare. We I think we'll change research. The alien subject immediately. Mm -hmm. I'm confident we can safely house it within the containment facility, but I can't say for how long. Yeah, 40 weapon fragments we need. Yeah, we we will interrogate the alien as quickly as possible. Zoing. <laughs> He's confused, poor guy. All right. Go to, oh, let's uh, let's see about our research. How much does beam weapons cost to do now? Eleven days. Okay, so we shaved three days off of that. Hmm. Oh well. Now I know. I should have. I if I would have been in my prime, I would have known that. But I'm not in my prime, apparently. Fuck. All right. Well, we've savings done. We're not reloading. We're playing this thing Iron Man as much as we can. Uh, you know, due to technical stuff. But uh, we're we're keeping our bad decisions and trying to because that's part of the game, really. It's part of the game to fuck up and feel bad about it and get vengeance on the aliens for it. <laughs> so yeah. All right. Well, thank you for watching another episode of Let's Play XCOM Enemy Within. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys next time as well. Where we, um... Well, it's the end of the month. We get to interrogate sectoids and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, stick around. See you then.